Welcome back to episode number 10 of this tutorial series on Raspberry Pi for complete beginners. You can find the series playlist in the description. And let's get started. This tutorial is actually a challenge I'm gonna give you to make you practice on what we have seen before in the tutorial series. So first, I will explain what you have to do, and then I will do the solution with you step by step. In this challenge, what you have to do is simple. You have to power on the LED when the button is pressed. And when the button is not pressed, you power off the LED. So you can start from a blank page, okay, and start from scratch to do this activity. Of course, you can rewatch the previous lessons and you can also get help from the previous code that you have already written. So the result should be this one. When I press the button, the LED is powered on and when I release the button, the LED is powered off by default. All right, and now you can press pause on the video, try to do the challenge by yourself and then watch the solution. So first of all, we are going to write the basic code that we need to simply be able to use GPIO, okay? So the configuration stuff first. So import rpi.gpio as GPIO. Then we also will need to import time because we are going to use time. Then gpio.set mode with gpio.bcm, okay? So we can use the GPIO number. Then we are going to set up our LED and set up our button. So GPIO.setup. We need to provide the LED pin. So I'm going to do that LED pin 17. Okay, that doesn't change. Button pin 26, that doesn't change either. And then GPIO setup, LED pin with GPIO dot out and GPIO setup with button pin GPIO dot in. Okay, make sure you don't mix those. So now everything is set up. I'm going to write GPIO dot cleanup for the end of the program before it exits. And now, okay, what we want to do, we want to keep monitoring the button state. So every time the button states change, we can simply modify the LED. So we can power on the LED or we can power off the LED. So what I'm going to do, simply while true. So I'm going to make an infinite loop so we can always check on the button. And I'm going to do if gpio.input button pin, okay? So what we do is we check, first we read, okay, what is the value from the button. If this is equal to GPIO dot high, okay, so the two equal sign, we test that condition, we read the button state. If the button state is high, then what we do is we power on the LED. So GPIO dot output, LED pin with GPIO dot I and I can put else okay I could put if GPIO input is equal to low but anyway it is a binary state so if it's not high it will be low so I can just put else and GPIO dot output LED pin GPIO dot low Okay, and actually let's try that. So run the script. I can save it as activity five. And let's see what happens. Okay, so that works. We continuously check the button state and then depending on what is the button state we set the LED to high or low and finally the cleanup is here but uh, as you already know because we keep going in this while loop then when I stop the program this will not 
be executed so when i run the script again we will have that warning okay but this is something you can skip for now and that we're going to solve later in this course and actually this program is running great but we will need to add something else okay we will add to add a time slip with a very low amount here between each iteration of the while loop because right now what is happening is you so you give a while true and inside you just execute some code okay that doesn't slip that doesn't wait for anything so it will execute the code at the max speed from the uh, cpu okay so to make you understand that i'm just going to go here okay and go to accessories and task manager and let's put that here okay as you can see the cpu usage is something above 25 so 27 percent here you have to know that on the raspberry pi you have four different cores so you have four cpus so if you have a cpu usage of 25 percent here with one program it means that one cpu is full with just one program okay if i stop here and i go back to task manager you can see that the cpu usage with nothing running is should be about two percent here okay i just have the tony ide and some other stuff but the cpu usage is really low and if i run the script the cpu goes up to 27 percent okay so it means that we added 25 percent of cpu usage and because we have four cpus it means that one cpu is completely full with that program okay which is not that great so what we can do here in the while true we can simply add time sleep for example with 0.01 and you are going to add that not inside the if or inside the else okay make sure you add it inside the while true at the same scope as here okay so it gets executed every time you enter the while true you can put it here if you want or you can also put it at the beginning it's basically the same because this uh, block of code will keep being executed again and again and again so what this will change is simply that now every time we are going to wait 0.01 second which means that this block of code will be executed at about 100 hertz which means 100 times per second and running that at 100 times per second is really enough okay you don't need to run it faster for this application so now if i run the script again so it is running i go to the task manager and you can see the cpu usage is now about so let's wait okay it's five percent and it goes even back to two percent so we are using now you can see three percent now we are using a very small amount of cpu okay if you just put a time slip with a low amount like this it will make the when the program slips okay it consumes really little or uh, none of the cpu resources and it's much better to actually use lower cpu usage so keep in mind that when you are actually running an infinite loop okay an infinite loop on purpose in that case when you are for example reading something and taking an action depending on what you have read it's better to add a very small time slip okay you can you can put 0 0.01 or you can go lower or you can go higher but just put some uh, slip okay to make the program wait so it will use much 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 less cpu all right that's the end of this episode if you found it useful, you will definitely like my full complete course on Raspberry Pi named Raspberry Pi for Beginners. This course contains 10 hours of hands-on video lessons. You can find the link in the description. Thank you for watching, see you in the course or in the next tutorial of the series.